Welcome back everybody. Hey, you can see it right here. You saw the picture earlier. Uh, the kit, the essential kit from Island Outdoors. Uh, we're going to build, be building our third drum uh, for competition year this year. So we're going to be running three drums and have the pellet cooker in the trailer. I'm going to get this out. Uh, we'll go over the parts. I'll get the parts laid out as best I can. Go over them a little bit and uh, we're going to go over the drum, how we're going to build it, the measuring. So if this interests you and you want to build a drum, I think this is going to be a pretty easy one for you to build. Let's get them parts unloaded. All right, let's take a look what we all have here for our parts. Down here in the front, you can see all our hardware uh, for bolting uh, the brackets, the swivel caster wheels together. Uh, it does come with the black faced lava lock temp gauge this will be your intake on the bottom the hinge lid is an add-on along with the bung screw in exhaust this is the standard exhaust that comes with it um, let me get that back out of the way along with the handle for the top of your lid the rid of our paperwork comes with the 22 inch grate you all seen those before and the charcoal basket with removable grate now my other ones they hold roughly a 15 pound bag of charcoal uh, in the drum running 275 that is enough uh, to do a competition brisket so what we're gonna do some of these parts let me get back over here um, the exhaust bung, the lid hinge, and the three wheel brackets. I will be taking those to the shop. We're just going to rattle can those black. Uh, it will be a gray drum. So, next step, we're going to get those painted up, get the drum brought back over here, and then we're going to show you the layout, um, how I'm going to do it for this drum. Okay, we got the parts boxed up. Like I said, those are going to be going to the shop. You can see the other parts, the grate and the charcoal basket back here. Uh, I wanted to go over this with you real quick. UDS parts, essential drum kit, um, the standard stainless steel grate, uh, plus the wheel kit, the three inch swivels, and the caster mounts, uh, two inch threaded smokestack with the teardrop damper exhaust in the lid the lid hinge, say that three times fast, total with shipping to the door, $221.30. Pair that with a, this drum, uh, actually I got for free. Normally the drums around here are running about 20 bucks. So, little elbow grease, guys, and uh, a little time. Uh, including painting the parts, assembling. You are going to need a hand. I'll show you that part later. But, uh, you know, 250 bucks worth of materials, you guys are going to have an ugly drum that you're going to like to cook on. So let's get that drum in here and let's start laying it out. All right, let's take a look. We got the painted parts back. This is the following night. So you can see the exhaust damper the hinge and the brackets for the wheels just regular gloss black to be honest with you okay <clears throat> excuse me as far as tools a couple seven sixteenths wrenches a sharpie a quarter and a three eighths drill bit for a cordless drill and if you have a sawzall like i do it's going to make cutting the intake opening a lot easier um, you can also use a tin snip. It's just going to be a little more work, to be honest with you. Now, the tape measure I have is a thin tape measure so that we can go around the barrel to get our circumference. Um, if your wife has a sewer's tape measure that rolls up, and she'll allow you to use it, or if you can sneak it out and not get caught, that would work the best. This works well. 
Um, but I'm going to switch. I'm going to get the drum up here and uh, we'll start measuring it out. And here is the star of the show, our drum. I'm not sure if the camera's picking it up or not, but right here is the seam on the drum. I like to use that as a starting point. So the first thing we're gonna do, like I said, this is a fairly flexible, thin tape measure. Uh, I believe it's just a 12 footer, okay? But I'm gonna come around the top here. And I'll try to do this so I can get out of your way. And we're gonna measure to that seam which is just shy of 72 inches. And it makes a little noise. So, it is like right at 72 and three quarter. Divide that by three, we're gonna have 24 inch spacing. Now, this drum I did start on at the shop before I was asked to make this video. Um, so I'm going to be completely honest with you, but I'm going to explain it to you too. It already has the holes drilled, which is hard to see, but that is for our two grates. So what I would did is I went down eight and then 14 inches. The reason I did this one at eight bigger cuts of meat. If I want to do whole pork butts or a pack of brisket, I have plenty of clearance with the lid. On this 14 inch shelf or grate, that is where we are gonna put our deflector pan. If I can find one right now, I would show it to you, but I'll show you in a minute, I promise. So what we did is we came off the seam and we went 11 and three quarter inches each direction. So there's a line of holes here a line of holes here, okay? That is our starting point. The seam is what I'm going off of for pretty much everything because it gives a nice straight line, okay? And all I did then, and I actually used my tape, I should turn it so you can see it. I just let it hang like, like a plumb bob, okay? It's gonna hang pretty true, straight up and down. So, we put an X here when we measured over for our 11 and three quarter, and then one at eight inches, one at 14 inches, and we drilled the quarter inch holes, okay? What we did then, is we went and measured in between the two sets of holes, all the way around to the other set we already did, we split that in half. So what we did then is we had 47 and 7 eighths. So all I did is I held here, I actually taped this on, so I had two free hands, and I came over just shy of 24 inches, so 23 and 7 A's, okay? And that'll give us our three points to set our grade on. A lot, of, uh, a lot of people do four points. I do three for a very good reason. With only three points, just like the three sets of wheels that go on the bottom, you will never have rocking because all three points will touch. You could have a fourth point if your, your drill your hole is off by a quarter inch, three will touch and the other one, it won't be touching. So three points is plenty good. If you wanna do four, just adjust the math, okay? Um, it'd be closer to 18 inches and it will be 24 because you're adding one. Now my other grade drum, I actually have my grates at different heights. The grade height is totally up to you. On the other drum, I came down five. Yeah, I came down five, 10, so just above this rib, and 15. That way, that's when I cook most of the ribs on, or chicken. 
And if I need to put six racks on, I can on the two grates. And about every 45 minutes, I'll pull the one grate out and swap the grates, okay? A little more even cooking. So there you go. Now the other thing I did do, and this is just purely because it's the way I like to do it. Let's let our tape hang down again, just off the table we're working on. I came down here and I took my Sharpie and I made a little mark, okay? The reason for that mark is if I'm gonna have my hardware here, I'm gonna do all my hardware there. So, after I get the bolts put in, I'm gonna come over here where I have the mark and there's the, the two little feet here. You can see how that sticks out farther than the bracket that goes on your drum. And that is where I'm gonna line up my wheels also. So they're all in a row, okay? The two feet I put on the bottom lip of the drum, and it'll sit right on there. Then they're all pretty much the same height, but with three points, you don't have to worry about it. So at this point, all we're gonna do is we're gonna take the bracket, we're gonna put it on where we made the mark, and we're gonna mark our three holes, okay? Next thing we're gonna do is figure out where we want our intake um, and our thermometer. Now what I like to do is the seam of the drum is back here, okay? That's also where my hinge lid is gonna be, which I will show you later. So if you see this little mark right here, let me make sure I've got my measurements right. I think I went down to eight and a half. Yes, eight and a half inches. And that's where my, thermo my ah, thermometer, I was gonna say thermostat, thermometer goes. And then below that, over to the side here, which it's hard to see right now. You see that little square I just kind of scribbled on there? That's where the intake is gonna go. So what I will do with the intake being here, let me grab one of the lids. For my exhaust, screws into the two inch bung. Okay, we'll take the protective caps off. So I want that opposite of my intake. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna line the small bung up where I'm putting the thermometer. So the large bung is on the opposite side. So this will be just off from the seat, okay? It's actually going to line up with this back set of holes. Let me show you that. Oops. So here's our rear set of holes. We'll have our, our wheel down here. And this exhaust bung will be right here. Now being that the front where the thermos, uh, thermometer, almost did it again, thermometer is going to go. We will put our hinge lid over, or yeah, our lid hinge over here. And we will show you that um, once we get this down, after we get everything marked in the drill, we'll come back and we'll show you that point. All right, so all we did here is we took the barrel, we laid it on the side. Now I will try, hold this up a little bit for you. Remember I told you that square I scribbled? You can see it right here. I'm gonna lay the intake right over the top of it. We're gonna hold it, and it's just resting the bottom of it on this lip. We're just gonna trace out the size of our opening for our intake. Let me get rid of this and I'll show it to you real quick. So there we have it. Oh, the glare's getting a little bit, but there you can see the larger square. So that's where our intake will go. Now, this will be the noisy part. 
is when you have to cut this out. <laughs> so if somebody's taking a nap in the house, don't do it. Trust me. Ask me how I know. She gets crabby that way. And back to the, the mark for the thermometer here. This is where you are going to put your 3 eighths hole. So we are going to do off camera. I'm going to drill all the holes for the brackets for the feet. And it comes with all the hardware you need. You will need an extra set of screws, uh, stove bolts, and nuts for your racks. Go to your hardware store, get six stainless steel bolts, carriage bolts, and the, the matching nuts. Screwdriver, 5 16 roughly, uh, wrench, tighten them up, you're good to go. Everything else is gonna be with the quarter inch bolts and nuts that are provided with the kit. So we're gonna drill off camera and then we'll bring you back and show you where we're at. All right, so while you were away getting that fresh, nice cold beer out of the fridge, uh, we put our stove bolts in. Uh, these I believe are number 10s and they are an inch and three quarter long. That way if your grate shifts from side to side, it's not gonna fall down in. You actually have put your grate in at an angle, which I'll show you later. We went through and drilled our holes for our brackets, for all the, all the casters. We also drilled the holes for the opening for the inlet. Now, one thing I forgot to tell you guys, I'm almost six and a half foot tall. So in order to have, to get these bolts in, you are gonna need a buddy. One of you are gonna have to put your head inside the drum when you lay it on the side. I suggest you do it now, okay? After, rather than try at them later, if you get what I mean. So um, what we're gonna do now, we're gonna drill the 3 a's hole here for the thermometer and we're gonna get this set on the ground uh, so I can show you a little more on how we're aligning the lid and putting the hinge on. All right, so here we go. Right up here is where our thermometer is gonna go and our intake. Our intake is directly below the thermometer. So we're gonna line up the small bung here so that our exhaust bung will be in the back. Now I am going to turn this so we go back here to our seam. And that is where I want to put the lid hinge. Now there's a flat side to your lid hinge and you can see this side's more curved. This goes on the side of the barrel. So I like to make sure it's seated good and then I will find the edge and then I will mark my holes. Okay, I'll hold it up there, mark my holes, drill my holes. And then when we close this, it should be seated properly to seal off the drum. So let me grab my marker. We'll start on the top and it moves. So we're going to double check. We're going to mark our four holes for the top. And on the side. Pardon the top of my head. There you go. So we're going to get the drill back out. We'll drill those. We'll assemble it with the supplied bolts and nuts and we'll bring you back when that's done because after this is a fix we're going to screw out this bung and put in our exhaust stack. One of the nice things about this lid hinge is it has a quick release pin on it. So we are going to pull that out. <clears throat> the top side will sit over here. The side that goes on the barrel right here we can go ahead and 
get this one started, get it put on, do the top one. We're gonna bring it back together, put the, the pin back in and test our fit. And then we'll snug everything up. All right, so we got everything bolted on. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna slide that back in and hope we don't have to adjust it. Find that dang little hole here. There we go, we got our pin back in. Holds the lid open, lift up, closes down nicely. Next step, let's go ahead while we're up here, let's come across, let's put our handle on so we can open it, what do you say? We're going to line that up straight across. Okay, you can eyeball up from your screws in the front. Let me show you. And eyeball with the center of your lid. See how close we can get this. How's that? Let's, let's go there. Okay, there we go. We'll put two holes there. We'll bolt this on now, if I can find what I did with it. If you didn't want to go with the bung exhaust, now is the time you would put that daisy wheel. I would go in the center of your lid and you can crack it, okay, with the five or six slots it has. I don't remember what I did with it. It's around here somewhere. I'll probably put it in the cabinets because I know I'm not going to use it but I might use it on a future project. So, you'd mount that here now. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna drill these holes, we're gonna take the plier, take this bung out, and get the exhaust stack in. So, let me do that real quick, and I'll bring you back. All right, so there we go, we got our holes drilled. I really didn't think that y'all, oops, bolt on the floor. That y'all wanted to listen to the drill through the metal. So, see if I can do this without dropping some more. Nice thing is they send the extra bolts. So if you do lose one, don't worry about it. They are standard quarter inch bolts. So, if you did happen to run short, lose one, whatever, any hardware store is going to carry them. See if I can get that in there with my fat fingers. There we go. There. We'll grab our wrenches. And just quickly tighten both of these up. Then we're going to move on to the exhaust step. So, you know, for so far, um, the big, biggest thing you've needed is a drill. Um, no welding, no really special fabricating other than if you can read a tape measure, if you can drill a hole, and run a couple wrenches, you're going to be good. Put this down. Let me grab my plier real quick, open it up. And all we're going to do is spread our plier apart and try not to kill ourselves. This one might be a little tight. There we go. They actually make a tool for this, but I don't have one. I'm not even sure we have one at the shop. So we're going to take this out. Here's our stack. I'm going to start it and get it threaded in. Now, you don't have to crank this down overly tight. I do have a pump plier, so if I wanted to crank it down a little more, 
I could. I like to get it to where it is just past hand tight. So there we are. We are at hand tight right here. See that? And if I can just give it a little oomph, it'll be good. Now with any luck, when you go to open this, okay, I prefer to have this pointed down. That way whenever my stack is open, I don't have to worry about this moving. Now on this one, the stack fits really nice and tight with this bolt and lock nut behind it. So it takes a little effort to move this. So I'm not gonna crank on this three quarter turn to get it to point down. Because it will stay pretty good right there. So we have our locking casters mounted on our brackets. And this is the point where you need your buddy. <coughs> because, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> I cannot reach the bottom and the outside at the same time. Uh, I have done it in the past where I've, I've used black tape on a long wrench to hold the nut on the inside to paint in the butt. You're going to struggle with it. Takes a little bit. So I will wait for my son to get home. He helped me with the last one. We're going to do that. In the meantime, I need to let my batteries charge up and we're going to cut out our intake. So I'll show you that when it's done. All right, you can see we have our lava lock thermometer put on. Uh, what I like to do is I'll tip them a little bit, especially a two and a half inch thermometer like this, a little harder to read. But I put 300 degrees pretty much straight up and down. That way if I look and I see that orange needle, I know where I'm at. Anything past that, I know I need to choke it down. Anything shy of that, I can adjust the, the bottom vent. We also have the bottom vent hole cut. So when little man gets here, we will go ahead, we will mount the intake and the wheels, and then we will reassemble the lid, put the grate in, put the charcoal basket in, fire it up with charcoal, and we're gonna let it run a couple of hours at about 200 degrees, and then we're gonna go up we'll let it burn out a full basket at 400 degrees we'll throw a couple wood chunks in there just to help season it a little bit and at that point guys we're going to be ready to cook on this uh, all in all about an hour's worth of time if you have the correct tools so uh, the worst part is finding that buddy to help you put the bottom in put the wheels and everything in. Now I have seen before uh, where people have uh, quarter inch stainless steel rivets and they can also rivet these on. So that's another option for you. Actually my other gray drum, the wheels, uh, the brackets for the wheels are riveted on with stainless steel rivets. Only because I built that one at the shop and the rivet gun was there it was eight o'clock one night, there's nobody there to help me. So I said, why not? Let's try and rivet it. The rivets don't hold. I can always pull it apart. I'm gonna get a little dirty, but I can put bolts and washers back in. So there you go. That's the basics on how to build a drum. I will get a couple pictures of this with uh, the fire basket in it, the rack in it, um, the deflector plate also, I will show you that. And I will show you that once we get the wheels bolted on. If you have questions, please put them in the comments. I'm happy to try help any way I can. Um, do me a favor though, wear old clothes. You're gonna get a little dirty doing this. But if you have questions, like I said, put them in the comments, reach out. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this one. And 
There you go, $250 drum cooker, all said and done. So, y'all take care, be good, and we'll see you next time.